So we're looking at Mark 14, 32 to 42. And Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we're being taught quite crucial things by Jesus in this passage. And we are being taught some things that I know I, I struggle with a lot. Particularly handling being let down. I know I've got a thing. I, I find it hard when people just, you know, I've got to watch myself a bit. Because uh, when people let me down, they might get a strong reaction. I find it really hard being let down. It bugs me. I can't deal with it. Um, handling, dealing with being uncomfortable with what God's will clearly is. Uh, that's another difficult one, isn't it? Handling life in a world that we are too weak for. To rise to the challenges of. Jesus says, watch and pray. But none of them is able to do it. And their spirit's willing, it's just their flesh is too weak for the job. And that's, that's our experience, if we're Christian people, of our life with God. The spirit is very, very willing, but the flesh is rubbish, <laughs> and it doesn't keep up. So here's Jesus then, as he faces down death, and the sort of death that he particularly must die, not simply despised and rejected by mankind, but forsaken by God and rejected as he bears in his own body the holy wrath of God for the sin of humanity. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus says, said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. And going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said. That loving relationship. Everything is possible for you. You are the Almighty God. Take this cup from me but not what I will, what you will. Jesus at his most vulnerable and, you know, inverted commas, human, right? But there's an awful lot more going on here than that. Well, the location, we know he's in Gethsemane, right? The location is no longer Bethany. He's been in Bethany the night before having the Passover. They were having the Passover a, a night earlier, 24 hours earlier than everybody else. Obviously, because Jesus was going to be the Passover lamb in reality. And so they had their sort of celebration of it to evoke it and, you know, get it going through their minds as to what was happening with Jesus, get it going more clearly. And it was required by the religious rules that you had to be within Jerusalem for Passover. Uh, Bethany was outside. There, there just wasn't space for all the people who, who, who came, so they were staying outside. Uh, but because there was just not room for people to be the Passover night before, they, they sort of fiddled about with it. And Greater Jerusalem you could be in, and it sort of ran halfway up the Mount of Olives, not as far as Bethany. Uh, so Jesus hasn't gone as far as there. He's just gone across the other side, and there's a big flat open space that nobody's using because they're all away having the Passover. And it's quiet because everybody else is doing stuff somewhere else. It's like being Christmas when you're not having Christmas yourself. And Jesus finds himself with his disciples, probably pre-arranged place, in a place called Gethsemane, towards the foot of the Mount of Olives. It means oil press, Gethsemane. So he's on the flat open place where they brought the olives down to and processed them, squeezed the oil out of them to take it away deserted, quiet, everyone else celebrating the festival. Jesus seeking peace and quiet to pray to God for a way out if possible. But if it's not possible, then what he seeks is the complete submission of his own will to the will of the Father. And that seeking the alignment of his own will with the will of the Father is, is, is what's happening when this incident goes on. We've seen Jesus struggling with temptation 40 days in the desert, being tempted by the devil at the beginning of his ministry. Here he is, Jesus, struggling with the temptation of his own flesh at the opposite end of his life, 
uh, as he wrestles to submit to the unwelcome will of God, as his, as his flesh cries out for some other outcome. That's the big thing going on. We can't forget that, can't put that to one side. He's going through that agony of soul because he loves you and because he loves me and because he knows what he's got to do for us. But we're shown that struggle to align his will with the will of God alongside the Spirit's willingness in his disciples but their flesh's utter weakness to follow through. And that is the big battle for all the saved sinners that Jesus has left behind on earth. When he's trying to tell them to watch and pray, and then they're going to fail him, they're going to learn a lesson that that's what you've got to do. Because your spirit is willing and your flesh is weak. That's the score. Your spirit's willing, your flesh is weak, so you've got to watch and pray, or you fall into temptation and you let Jesus down badly. So here's a solution we spend our lives working on. Watch, so we're alert to what's happening. Pray about it, because we're too weak to deal with it ourselves. So that you do not enter into the open door that exists on the house of temptation. 